Hello, 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 it's Crafty Chris again. Today we're going to be making a pinwheel layout. And we're going to use a, a number of blacks and whites um, and uh, whatever's on the back sides of them uh, in our layout pages. So basic theory is I want to do a bunch of um, pinwheels and some of those pinwheels I actually want to use as um, uh, mats for my pictures. So I have done a little bit of practice in making pinwheels to get a sense of how big they have to be to get a decent sized photo on them. So this was an 8 by 8 piece of paper that I pinwheeled down into, I don't even know, this is approximately it looks like a five and a half, um, uh, a little over five and a half inch frame, which would give me probably a good five by five photo. Um, this one was a 12 by 12 paper, and this one I think I had an eight and a sixteenth inch frame, which would give me a, a good seven and a half inch photo. Um, and, but it takes up the whole page. So here's my black base here, and it, it definitely, you know, you get one photo and that's it, right in the center of your page. So I, so an, a 12 by 12 piece isn't going to make it. This is not a bad size. Um, I don't really need to have a photo that that is that large, which I think this comes to, what did I say this was? Here's my ruler. This was a five and a half inch. I want to get it down more towards a four inch photo, a three inch or a two inch photo. So I'm thinking that relatively speaking, um, I should not be looking at, this was an eight by eight, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, eight by eight. So let's try a six by six. Now making pinwheels is pretty easy. So this has two sides. It has the nice patterns, uh, plain side and then the pattern side. I want the black side up for the most part. Um, and I don't care what's being covered on the inside. So I'm going to have the side I want to see is going to be a side that comes up. So how you make your basic pinwheel is you grab a pencil, which I have right here, and a longer ruler, and you're going to draw diagonal lines on the sides you don't really care about. So I'm just going to go from corner to corner, and it doesn't have to be exact. I'm just making it easier on myself by using this, uh, by drawing these lines. Okay, so the theory is that all the holes need to be on the same side of the line because that's where you're going to punch a hole to put a brad through and then you're going to have a hole in the center and the theory is halfway is where you're going to cut. So let's just put in those halfway lines. Um, so this is just a little over four so I'm gonna cut down to a two it might be too much of a cut it doesn't matter once I fold it anyway so I'm just gonna measure my two inches here if it's a little more a little less makes no difference because you're gonna fold it and it will determine exactly what your line measurement needs to be but this just gives me a guide for doing my cutting so I have my dots on the same side of the line in the corners. Do you see it's on the right here, it's on the right here, it's on the right here, and it's on the right there. And I have my points where I'm going to cut into and then my center dot. So I am not going to poke my holes until I do my cutting. A little tip here. Um, actually I'm going to poke my holes before I do the cutting. Um, because what happens if you try to poke your holes after you've done the cutting? And as close as you can get into the corner there um, as, without breaking the paper, there we go, 
So I just kind of estimated when I drew my dots. Doesn't matter. It's all going to get covered up anyway. But you want to make sure that your bread doesn't fall out. Now, speaking of breads, because you're not using you're using this as a mat, you're not using it as an actual decorative pin mill, pinwheel. You just want to use your basic brads. You don't want to get into anything fancy. There's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. Okay. Now, if I'm going to fold this into the center, this is going to get covered up by the photo. I don't want that. I want this to get covered up by the photo. So all my holes, I'm going to grab some crummy brads. Well, not crummy, but you know, your basic silver brads. I have a whole container of brads over here somewhere. Yes, I do. Here we go. And I'm just going to grab your standard little brads. Doesn't have to be a big one. Can be a big one if that's all you have. Uh, where's my regular? I have a lot. Of, oh, there they are. Tons of silver ones. Or I could do do whatever, whatever color. It doesn't matter. It's underneath your photo. So I'm going to grab a bread, any old bread. That might be a little too small. There we go. It's got a, the longer the stem, the easier it is for you. So my holes are here. I'm just going to poke from the underside so that I can bring this up into the center. And I'm just going to attach one underneath the other. As I go around, I'll do this again so you can see. And I'm thinking I needed to do just a little more. Aha, okay. So here's an interesting thing. So, halfway between there and there wasn't enough of a cut. So I'm just going to go in a little more. And how you tell is because things get really tight and you can't fold your pinwheel in. So just give it a, a little bit more. So you want to do more than half. Learn as you go. That's what we call this. And now it's much easier to manipulate. Whoops, took the wrong one. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Much happier now. Make sure you put them in order. <laughs> and try not to suffer like I am. There we go. Just kept missing the hole and into that center hole. Sometimes the pattern is so um, active that you can't really see what's going where that center hole is. But okay, so there is technically our pinwheel, and if we were going to stick it on something and let it do its pinwheel thing, uh, we would leave it like that. But we're not. We're going to smush it down because we are actually going to use this as a mat for a photo. So I'm flattening it right out. Here's my layout page. Let me get my picture holders. This looks to me like it might be in the four range. Four by four square range. Might be a little smaller. Yeah, so that is that is four by four. So it's going to be a three and a half by three and a half or anything under four. Those are all fours. What do I got here? This is my next round. There we go. Three and a half by three and a half. So let's see how that one looks. Perfect. 
So my three and a half by three and a half inch photograph is going to go on there. And for all intents and purposes, let's just take some re repositionable tape. We're going to stick it under there. You know, and I'm thinking now that I don't even have to do that. I could have just glued that all down, taken this out and glued it all down. That would have been another thing I could have done. And let's kind of try to center it so it gives us an idea of what we're looking at. And there's one pinwheel. Okay, now our pictures don't have to go vertical they can uh, and horizontal. They can be on an angle uh, along with our... Um, our photograph. So now that was a six by six. I'm going to try this one is a four and a quarter so it doesn't really matter but as long as they're square so I'm going to try a four and a quarter by four and a quarter on this one. Let me get that cut done. Four and a quarter by four and a quarter. I'm going to make a slightly smaller square mat. Again, I'm flipping it to the side I don't really care about. And I'm going to do my lines. Whoops. This is just the right size. Maybe not do it on my paper. Alrighty, starting here. Going to there. There's one. There's two. Center hole. Somewhere around there I'm going to put my dots. I just put those to remember I've got to poke them. And I'm going to go more than half. So I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm not going to take the time to measure it. Just make sure I go more than half and it doesn't matter if they're all the same because it will fold down as a mat anyway. You just want to be more than halfway. There we go. Oh, and I was supposed to poke the holes. Now you'll see my struggle and my poking myself with the poker. So the reason why I say do it before you cut is because you will poke yourself trying to get a hole in those corners. So we will do another one so we can practice that idea. There we go. And I need one in the center. Alrighty. So let's grab ourselves another one of these guys. Now, I do not want the white out. I want to have the colorful red out. So I'm going to grab and poke my um, brad in from underneath. And then I just keep adding. So now it's twist it over to show the brad and I'm putting that into the holes that I poked and the smaller you get the more challenging it is and I can tell you right now that this is going to snap so I'm going to grab a little piece of washi and I'm going to go over this corner because I know that if I try to create my um, hole there, it's going to snap off. So I'm going to redo that hole. So I just put a little piece of washi on there, trim it off. So now I've got some reinforcement. I'm going to go back in and maybe move my hole a little bit lower. You just want to have it about the same distance because otherwise you get a wonky looking um, windmill or pinwheel rather. Alrighty, there we go. Sticking it in there. 
washi tape's a little sticky, so it's giving me a bit of a hard time. Oh, goodness. There we go. This is why you want breads that have a fairly long bar on them you know the two pieces okay somehow i flattened my bar oi 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 the struggles and the challenges there we go all right come on and then through the back there we go so our pinwheel is there and i'm just going to open that up the post on my uh, washi was far too small. I just made it extra struggle. So you want to get posts that sit nice. Okay, and there again, if we wanted to keep it 3D, we could. But because I'm using these as mats, I'm just going to flatten it out. And I get my nice pretty pattern on the outside edge and this is going to be smaller so let's try a three by three I think that actually is going to be too big but let's give it a shot and I mean if you didn't want to show the paper that that's already there you could cover it up completely so you end up with something that just shows the edge of the uh, the windmill the pinwheel but i kind of like having the the pinwheel there so let's get a smaller piece i'm gonna try these are three by threes i want to do a two and a half and i don't have a paper there but I do have scrap paper here in my black and white paper bin that I took out because I wanted to do black and white so I'm gonna make a quickie mat got lots of white paper and I want to do two and a half by two and a half so I could use that easily. There might be a piece that's already two and a half. Two and three quarter. That's a little tight. I think I still will stick with two and a half. And get my cutter. And I cut this into a two and a half. Whoops. Make sure you're in the right place. Two and a half. Uh, two and a half and I'm going to write that down because once I take this off it's going to go back on my ring here uh, pencil so this is two and a half by two and a half and I'll write no it doesn't matter it's the same on both sides get my handy dandy little punch Punch a hole in the corner. And there we go. I'll write it on both sides. Okay. So now that's a little better for me. So let's get some repositionable tape. And we're going to stick that under there. And there's number two. So, there we go. Got a couple of pinwheels here with pictures on them. I think I might even go for a four by four. So if this was six and I got a four by four out of it, or a three and a half by three and a half out of it, then 
I'm going to try a 7 inch square piece and see what that gives us. I'm sure there's some mathematical thing I could be doing for this. Oh, look at this fancy paper. Is that going to go in amongst the colors that I've already got? Not really. Although, it's the side I want. Now, I only see a bit of the pink, and I've got pink in there, so I'm going to try this. So this is, uh, it's too short don't really want to dig into there that's a seven inch and it has plain turquoise on the back so that will work <clears throat> so I'm going to cut this seven inches we go and then I can do a bunch of little decorative pinwheels but here's my guy I need a larger ruler for this one whoa that's actually that's seven by seven okay for a minute there it looked not seven by seven okay go and put our dots and we're going to poke our dots before we take the paper off <coughs> because otherwise like I said it becomes too difficult all on the same side of the line one in the center Okay, see if we can find a nice long. These are all short. There's one that I might be able to use. So I'm using up my um, brads in a functional way as opposed to a a decorative way using up my scraps of paper remember I'm cutting in more than halfway don't really care if it matches because it's all going to be underneath I'll be more careful when we do the ones that we're using for de decoration okay so I start underneath with the paper side that I want to see up. So I'm underneath there with my bread, and then I add, and then I flip it over, and I go down into the next paper. Combine the hole. There we go. Down into the next paper. Can you see how I'm just adding them one on top of the other? And down into the next paper. And then the whole thing goes down into the center hole. And then I just flatten it out on the back. And fold those lines. And hopefully, I've ended up with something close to a four inch mat. Let's see how we did. Here's my four by four picture. Please work, please work. It's a little bit larger than I want, so maybe a six and a half would have been okay. Uh, but it still looks all right, so I'm all good with that. So those are the three photos I'm going to have on my page. Just reaching to get a little more repositionable tape so I can 
put that on the back. Now I think because I've got this little guy in the center, if I wanted to conserve my brads, I would glue them down rather than uh, use the brad, but I got hundreds of brads that I never use, um, so I don't really care. And in that, I think what I'm going to do is um, pop dot my pictures onto the pinwheels. Now let's see how this is all going to work out. Just going to move these a little bit to one side. Make sure I got my, I don't use my protector for my pokey tool so I don't hurt myself. Alrighty. I don't mind if, oh, this didn't want to stay. I'm going to put you there. I don't mind if they crisscross each other. I just don't want them to go off, off the page. So I'm thinking I might put this one up to the top there, making sure that it at least is enough on an angle so it's not like this, where it's completely in an odd angle but just have it touching the edges of my page. And then I can do a similar thing underneath with my other pinwheel. And then I'm gonna have a title there and I can have a pinwheel, this little guy, scooching in underneath or on top of that one. There we go. So I have my nice little picture, uh, uh, photographs, and I'm going to make some mini pinwheels just to decorate. And I think I might have to keep them in a more solid color because I'm looking at all of this. And this is looking a little too... That might, might be okay with the white on the outside. What else do I have in my stash? Oh, I have gray. I have a smaller piece of the red. Or maybe I just leave it as is and I use some of some breads to give me a little bit of decoration because I do have lots of breads to get rid of. Now, one thing that I think when I look at this is that I may be losing some of the definition because of all of the patterns. So I'm going to want to do something to draw the eye to the photo. And I think what I'm going to do is use a black pen to create a square around the photo. And what I mean by that is I'm going to take that off. And I'm just going to give myself a dotted black line. So it draws the attention to the edge of the photographs. And we'll see if that kind of anchors it a little bit more. There we go. See if I like that just a little bit better. And now I feel that that anchors it just that little bit more in amongst all the chaos of the papers. So I'm going to do that on all of them. So just bear with me.
And when I do my lines, I don't look at the pen. I look at the edge of the paper and that helps me to get my lines very straight. As you can see, I'm, I'm pretty good at this because uh, I do do it quite a bit. Alrighty, so that's going to go there. That's going to go there. This one, I still have to do the lines. This one's a little tight, but I still think it needs the lines. So I'm going to go really close along the edge of this one. And I haven't folded the edges very soundly, so it's kind of bumpy here. Got a bit of a bumpy ride happening. Okay. There we go. And then that goes there. it on the angle I would like to see. Pull that out a little bit more. And if I wanted to, I could take the pinwheels off the page as well. So I could space them out a little bit more if I wanted to. And maybe created some black space in between. Actually, I think I like that better. So now let's let's see how that is going to work. I want to make sure any spaces that I'm making are sort of um, a nicely square or angular, uh, not weirdly off-center. That's going to go like that. Okay. I do like that better. And now that we've done that, I feel like I want to add one or two little bits. And I also need a title. I, think I might have something for summer. So let me grab my new container that I have for my titles. And I can show you that. So I created this online. It's in one of my prior videos. And inside, I've got things... Uh, divided into little pockets and um, birthday, crafting, love, inspiration, friends and family. Okay, I am going to take a minute. I won't keep you watching and I will be right back with a title. Okay, I found what I want. I am going to take pictures of my garden because everything is new and improved out there after this last bad weather rain season. I, uh, everything is growing so I'm going to be taking some pictures of my maybe myself sitting in my chair reading out there. Okay so the glue on this is incredibly yucky. So, where's my powder tool? Let's see if I can get that to a point. Or I could just roll it off. Don't really want white powder on my black paper, but there we go. Wow. I say 
So my new broke, which is not a big deal because I'm going to be gluing it down every, anyway, but I do not want sticky stuff because it's got a, like a three-dimensionalness to it and I want it to be flat. <sighs> challenges, challenges. So I'm just going to rub it until I can get it off. All right, so let's just kind of figure out where everything was. Something like this. And my title is going to be There's Beauty and New Beginnings. And you know what? I think I'm going to put that here. I thought I could put the new in there, but I don't know that I even need that. Because this is just a very simple layout. I think I'm going to keep the new for another time. And now, let me see if I can just make I'm just going to use some brads. So I have my color brads here. Keep it very simple. And what colors? I've got pink and red mostly. So pink and red. And I can get turquoise out. Don't know if I'll use it. Now let's so, let's see what I have in the department of, I'm going to glue this down before we go any further, because I think I want to make sure that I don't move this. Now, to glue it down is very simple, it just needs a little bit of, of tape. buried some of my things. I think that's in here. I have a project on and I just threw a bunch of things in it. One of them was my adhesive. So I'm just going to put a couple of spots of adhesive and then I'll figure out what to trim off afterwards. Now, I wanted to have this one a bit on an angle, not too drastic an angle. So there we go. And this I want to have it crisscrossing over. Alrighty. And then for my picture, I'm going to put pop dots underneath. So this one, I'm going to do the same. Don't know if I'm going to end up needing adhesive in all this area. And this one, I'm going to have up in this corner off on a bit of an angle, but making sure that this space sort of creates something that looks balanced. Okay, there we go. And then this little guy is mostly on the page. We need a lot of adhesive for him. And he is going to be There we go. 
and then I'll stick him back on there so I know where he's gonna live already okay and then maybe I can put new there new there and then I have this little saying at the at the bottom that says there is beauty in new beginnings just to take up a little bit of that space down there this guy is gonna have to come down a little bit further I actually think I like that nice okay let's see what we have in our brads all right there we go we got our threes we got three sets of three which is awesome now i just want to look at this and let's say our new is going there let's say that so we could have Three red up here. We could have three white down there. And then we could have no. Mm, no oop, mm. I think I'll put the white over here. Three white over here. And three pink right there I think that's good so now we just need to poke those holes so before we do that let's get these things glued on I'm gonna pop dot this let me get some pop dots here mm -mm -mm. actually I'll just use my roll of pop dot stuff that's here already Use that up and take a piece. I'm gonna have to cut this in half. Let's see. There we go. This guy's gonna go there. And I'm gonna cut this in half. This guy's gonna go here. And this little one. going to go there but I'm going to trim it back because I can see that ripping off there we are alrighty take off the backs of those it up with my mat so my visual is good there we go and my new I need to put some glue on my new <laughs> oh what's going on there there we go Just a little bit of glue. You don't want it popping out if you can avoid it. Whoops, I got be too much there. Spread that around. And I know he lines up here. Now this is glue that dries white or sorry not white um glue that dries clear 
So I'm not worried if I'm getting a little bit of glue on the paper because it will go white and it's matte. Yep, perfect. There we are. Dee, dee, dee. Love it. Okay, so now we just need to get our poker, our hoe poker, which can be anything from a pin to a pokey tool to this thing that I happen to have. Now, how I'm going to do this is I'm going to have my ruler and I'm going to measure in about an eighth of an inch. Actually, I need a piece of foam. Whenever I find foams in packaging, this is what why I keep them. This was just in, I don't know, something to keep it from breaking. And I keep them so that I can poke without um, creating a hole in my mat or you know poking through to a hard surface is very difficult and you want to get them um, separated enough that uh, they look good and you want to have them somewhere central I actually think I am gonna move that just a little more in okay how much in I don't really know how much is there is there and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five lines over. And one, two, three, four, five lines over. There we go. So that should line my um, brads up quite nicely, those three little holes. Always start with the center one because then you can manipulate the others if you need to. Make sure that when you put them in, you put them in so that the arms will not be going in the wrong direction of the page, like I just did. There we go. And these guys, oh, not too bad. There we go. So I'm going to push down on that so it's nice and flat. Now I'm going to go to the next one, book it through. Now this one looks like it might be glued together. Get my pokey tool down there, and there we go. And turn that over. Oh, see it shifted. So. And just grab something that you can push with and push it over as much as you can without ripping the paper. There we go. You have a little bit of wiggle room with these. And put this one in. over. I'm going to have to turn him around, I think. Yep. There we go. Again, gotta there we go. Get them right into the right place. And there we have our three at the bottom. Three at the bottom. Now I'm going to do three at the top for the red. Again, use my foam. I think I came in about. How far did I come in? Mm. Ooh, ooh, 
Hmm. Fifteen six eight. Okay. So we're gonna do the same thing on this side, and I'm gonna start from the outside edge in poking my hole. And I have to remember I want it to be in a certain amount as well. So I had it right along the edge of the um, numbers. So I have that happening again. And I am going to start at 15 sixteenths. Oops. And the reason why is because this space here is 15 sixteenths. And then I'm going to go over, I think I went over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 again. That looks good. My little holes again. This is neat and tidy. Start with my center one. These are a little bit bigger. I might have to shove them in a little from the edge because I don't want my. Oh, it should be okay. Yeah, it's a little going to be a little tight. So let me push that in a touch. Now, trick is, if you find that you get too congested around um, where one goes in, you can always just fold them this way instead of separating them. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to go in, pull it through. Oh, these are quite tight. Needed a little more space. This one. This one doesn't want to stay put. There we go. Got a bit of glue on there. And my last one. These guys are a bit tight. Should have given them a little more space. This one, needs to go there, flatten them down, and I'm going to have to turn that one around. And they're a bit floppy because I folded them over in half so they're really loose so I'm just going to put a daub of glue underneath to keep them in their place and like I said the glue is clear so I'm not worried about it showing but I am interested in making sure that everybody separated the right amount. Just hold it for a second. There we go. A bit close to the edge. Should pay more attention to the... Uh, oh, that's really close to the edge. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, well, I may be taking those out and doing something different with them. Patching it. 
and shifting them a little bit but I'll see how it is so these guys I'm gonna have to do the center one first because it needs space it's bigger than the other two little ones and what I was running out of was space with that other one so I'm just going to randomly poke a hole because I don't really have a measurement here and I'm going to put this guy right in make sure that I can spread him on either side Push them down nice and flat. There we go. And now I can figure out where I want the other two on either side. So I need my there we go. So this time I just eyeballed it because I didn't have to worry about where it was coming from from the bottom. I just want to make sure that it centers on the big one. Whew. The heat just went here. And that one's a little bit too close. Okay. And there we go. Put that back in the glue bottle. get it in. Hmm. There we go. Alrighty. So, happy with those, happy with those, happy with the layout, not happy with these guys at the top, so I will be taking those off and repairing underneath and just shifting them down at least um, an eighth of an inch from the edge because these two I don't I, I like what's going on there and actually I'm very happy with the layout considering it was just a random idea in my brain now the last thing you want to do before you finish everything up is you want to trim the excess pieces try not to trim your page They go into recycling because they're really not big enough for anything. And do the last one. There we go. And there's your finished layout. Da 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 da. All right. So, thank you for joining me. For another uh, scrap your scraps I hope you enjoyed uh, playing with this idea of pinwheels and as I said you can play with them in a much bigger way if you choose to with the the piece that can cover the entire page and then <clears throat> add little bits of color around it or change your uh, sizes up the thing you just need to remember is that it's always going to be a square okay Enjoy your week. See you next Thursday.